My name is Louis Boria. I am the creator and designer behind Brooklyn Boy Knits. Brooklyn Boy Knits is a knitting company that I started about 10 years ago where I customize knitted wear for adults, babies, children, anywhere from hats, scarves, women's vests. I do sweaters. I do furniture. I have this poof that I made that took me about two weeks to make. If I can knit it, I'll find the pattern and I'll do it. When I was about, I would say, 15 years old, my grandmother tried teaching me how to, how to crochet and I just didn't like it. And then um, years later, I had a dream and I literally woke up one morning with my hands in the air as if I was knitting because in my dream all I saw was, you know, knitting with yarn and needles. And I said, maybe I should learn how to knit. And it just started from there. And from that, from that moment, from the moment that that I got, I got that dream, it was just, I kind of flew with it. I was, I was a little taken back, you know, when I first started knitting. Um, you know, typically you see women, older women knitting, so you don't see men knitting, especially openly in public. So for the first few years, I, I kind of felt like, well, I don't want to be judged. But then it got to a point that I realized, you know, I'm wasting all this time on the train. I got a project in my bag. You know, I go, you know, I go to work and I, you know, during my lunch hour, I go to the lounge and I sit there and I knit for an hour. And that was the only time that I was knitting was during my lunch hour. And then I said, you know, I got a whole hour and 15 minutes to and from work every day. I'm wasting time and I have to, I have to get over that. And I kept telling myself and little by little, it just, I would sneak up my project on the side. And, and then I would see people, you know, noticing me knitting and they were like, eventually started coming up to me and started talking to me. And I, once I realized that you know, it was all in my head. I had to let go of that part of me. And, and once I did, it was like I had this complete freedom. And now I get on the train and I don't even think twice. The first thing I do is I sit, I look for the, an empty seat. I'm like, all right, we're good. And I open my bag and I take out my project and I start knitting. A friend of mine um, had sent me a text message. So then he sends me a screenshot. And it's a screenshot of me on the, on the subway knitting. I'm like, who the heck's taking my picture? Like, this is weird. And I'm, I'm laughing at it. And he's like, no. And I'm telling him this. I'm texting this message to him. And he's like, no, silly. He's like, look at who sent that picture. And when I realized it was Frenchie Davis, I said, what? So the minute that picture posted on Facebook and all her followers started contacting me and they all started wanting to place orders, that's when I got a message from the Daily News. Now I'm, my mind is blowing up right now. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, it's crazy. But I think about how this story's completely changed my, my life. It sounds cliche and I keep saying this over and over and over again, but Follow those dreams, follow those passions, man. That's what it's about. We all talk about our purpose in life, right? And I can easily say, oh, my purpose in life is, is to knit. It's not, it's not even that. I didn't realize what my purpose was until this occurred. And the emails that I've gotten, the messages I've gotten through social media, it's been about people being personal with me and sharing their stories. I had a woman, you know, in Australia who her father had passed away not too long ago, and he was a knitter, and she was kind of down and out, and you know, she she said that when she read my story, it made her smile, and she says, you know, it, it just lifted her up, and that that in itself, right there, that's what it's about. And I tell people, you know, just go with it, man. If that if there's something in you that you've been wanting to do, you've been wanting to try out, by all means, go and do it. You know, go out there and do it. You, the, the worst that's going to happen is what? It doesn't work out. Then you move on to the next thing. For years, I struggled with um, coming out the closet. Let's be real about it. You know, that's like something that it's hard for anybody to do. I came out the closet years ago. And when I started knitting, it's kind of like I went back into the closet all over again. It was because now, now I'm doing something that's obvious. That's obvious to a woman's craft. So I didn't want to be tagged as gay, homo, I didn't want that. And I kept putting myself back into that closet, you know? And you gotta let it go. At the end of the day, you gotta let it go. You gotta let go of that fear. I don't care if it's knitting, I don't care if you do hair, I don't care if you do makeup as a man, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're good at it, that's what matters. Forget about the haters, forget. Someone's always gonna be hating on you. Someone's always gonna have something negative to say. And I think once you let that go, you become a completely different person. You become who you were meant to be. And I think that's important. I think it's important to just let yourself shine right through, regardless of what you do, regardless of what craft it is, regardless of what 
field you work in. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. You know, you're good at it. That's what matters. And that's what people are going to see.